Okay, well, I uh, certainly am pleased with the second half. Um, if we play with that type of defensive activity, energy, and intention, we got a chance to be a, a, a competitive team in our league. Um, what we got to decide is that we're going to be that way every night for 40 minutes. And um, I think when this team makes that conscious decision that, that that's the most important – they, they want to be good, but when they make the conscious decision that's the most important thing is for our team to figure that out, then we are going to be good. Um, we can't be a, a light switch team. We can't be a team that turns it on and turns it off. And in the first half, the light switch wasn't on. And I, that was really disappointing. Uh, again, I, am I glad that we responded and found a way? Heck yeah, there's no doubt about that. And I told them that in the locker room. But we, we, we got to decide that we're going to be the way we were in the second half every second of every possession. And the league we're going to and the games that we're about to start playing, that's going to give us a chance. It don't mean that we're going to win, but that's going to give us a dang chance. But if we play the way we did in the first half, it don't matter who we play against, where we're going, we're not going to have a chance. And so uh, I'm pleased that we, we, we responded in the second half. Uh, there's a lot of things that were positive there, and I'm really disappointed in how we played in the first half. And that's that's about it. John said you didn't talk much about defense at halftime. Was that more of like, you guys know that that wasn't good enough? Figure it out. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, with, with, with for this is my 13th year, sometimes you lose count. You've been doing it so dang long. But um, – I think the majority of my career, if we if we played a half like that, any team I've coached, I've been I go in there and yell and scream and break things and act like a idiot, and I didn't do that today. I walked in there, we talked a couple about the zone a little bit, because I thought that they hadn't played they played 20 possessions of zone the whole season until tonight, and 10 of them were in one game against UT Martin. So as a staff, we had talked about it, and we we played a little zone against each other in practice the last two days. Um, so it wasn't like we hadn't prepared, but it's not like we were going to this game expecting them to play a ton of zone. Uh, so we were a little shell shocked by that. They they did a nice job. They prepared for a couple of our main zone actions from last week. Um, so we talked about that a little bit. Talked about sharing the ball because the ball wasn't popping around in the first half. Uh, and maybe a couple other details offensively, and then just kind of looked at him and was like, well, like what, 11 deflections is what we had him for in the first half. The stuff we value, we're not doing. We lost four straight four-minute games. Like, we won the first. I mean, it's like we got to make – like, I, I got no adjustments here. Like, we got to make a conscious decision. We come out double the post, we don't rotate. So, because we're not alert. So then you go play the, the post one-on-one -on -one and you're not alert. You're going to get – you're getting crushed on back cuts and back doors and fan outs. It's like I, it doesn't matter what we do strategically. If we don't play hard and play with intention and activity and communication, it don't matter what we do. Come out, play 2-3 zone, give up a layup. Play 1-3-1, one, one, give up a layup. I mean, it, it's not about strategy. Sometimes it's about five guys deciding they want to sit down, guard, be alive, and have some intention. And we don't have guys that dog it, but that's not that's not what's expected in the first half when you put this jersey on, guys. And I – and I told I mean, I, I said it more concisely than I've said it to you guys. We just got to decide that, that we care about defending and doing the little stuff. And I, and I, I guess I will say this. I really appreciate our fans because when we started defending and playing with energy and activity, our fans responded. That's, you know, like praise the, the acts you want repeated. That's one thing I learned when I started getting into coaching. It's not just about telling them what they're not doing. You praise the, the acts that you want people to repeat. So – when our fans started cheering their butts off because we were playing hard and getting our hands on balls and getting stops, I went, thank goodness, because they like to be cheered for. They do. They, I mean, they're, they're human beings. They like it when people cheer for their butt, and they're cheering for them for the right reasons. So I was, I was actually – I appreciated our fans getting into it when we started playing the right way. That helps us. Coach, it seemed like Josh Reed played really well in that second half defensively. Can you just describe the impact he gave you guys at that end of the floor? Yeah, I you know the first half I said this on my radio show. I we get in there at halftime as a staff and like like you know anybody that was watching that game's talking about why the heck we can't guard anybody. So we're talking about it as a staff. It's not rocket science. I mean that's the first thing I want. Like, you guys kidding me? We they they score forty and shoot fifty five percent. I think that's what it was if I remember right. Fifty eight. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Worse than I even thought. 
but they 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 you know they score forty, shoot fifty eight, and we got eleven deflections. I mean, we had no activity, and so I, we're sitting there talking about. It. I look down. I said, "Why did we play Josh only? For, who's the stupid head coach that only played Josh four minutes? Because he was the damn best defensive player." And I, I thought about starting him coming out of halftime, but Dan had, had also had great energy to compete in the first half. I, I thought he was the one guy that had great energy in the first half. It was obvious. So we we, we said, "I'm gonna we're gonna start Dan." go a little smaller, which I thought would help us with our activity, and then um, bring Josh in right away. And boy, was he good in the second half, guys. I mean, he was defending. He got his hands on balls. He held his ground in the post. And then it's amazing. You do you play the right way and do the right things, and all of a sudden the ball goes in for you. I mean, then all of a sudden he makes two big threes. Like, it's amazing how the basketball gods reward that kind of stuff. So um, I was really pleased with Josh's play tonight. He was the catalyst for our team. Evansville gets 13 free throws. John said, you kind of emphasize that it's a personal battle and that there's another man in front of you on those kind of things. Did you see progress in that tonight, or was it kind of the defensive lapses in the first half just led to not a lot of fouls? No, I thought I thought we, in the second half, defended the ball significantly better. I thought we contested shots. I mean, how many did we block? I, I, don't, I don't have a count in my head, but they have us for – eight blocks in the game. I mean, how many of them were like the primary defender blocking the shot? I mean, that's contesting better. I mean, I want to say five or six was the primary. Eh, Vic had two, right, the coming from coming to help down. I mean, uh, four or five were the primary defenders, so you're contesting shots better and you're doing it without fouling. I, that, you guys, you th if you think I didn't re realize that team shot 28 and 30 free throws against us in two of our last three games coming to the night I, I promise you I might not be the smartest but I ain't stupid like we've been we've been emphasizing the hell out of finishing the D and with with discipline and practice contesting but doing it without committing silly fouls we got some habits we got to break and again I thought there was some good steps there in the second half tonight Day Day Thomas has 10 points struggle shooting from the floor but just really active everywhere else and had I think it was his first multiple block and multiple steal game here at Cincinnati, did you see a kind of elevated level of intensity? And he was also able to kind of break down that zone a little bit more in the second half. Ball pursuit, the hands, activity. Like I thought in the second half, that you know, there's the, there's a bunch of loose balls in the first half, and we're not quick to them. You know, I mean, it was like, you know, you some. I, I'm like, guys, sometimes being the coach is like sitting in the stands. Like I, I can't go out and get the damn loose ball. I see what y'all see. Like hopefully, I see a little bit more. But I mean. It's like balls bouncing around, and you're like, you ki like, y'all kidding me? Like, and that just becomes because you're not alert and ready. You're not moving to the basketball defensively. You're not ready to make. You're not out there to make defensive plays. And I thought Day Day made a bunch of those defensive plays, whether they were steals. It all, it all starts because he got active, active, started moving to the ball, doing little things, and you know, defensive rebound. Like you just, you kind of saw that tonight. So I, I want his decision making to continue to improve. You know, and I told him that in a couple of timeouts. I thought he missed some guys or overpenetrated a little bit. But I, I, I thought his activity and energy was phenomenal, especially in the second half. You, you had two guys out. They had two guys out. Uh, first off, what are the chances of your two being back in a week? And then secondly, how does that mess up your, your scouting when their two best scorers are out? Does it, does it play a part in the game at all, psychologically or anything? I. I, I can't speak to what it does to other teams. I can tell you that when we we found out when they those two walked out tonight, and one of them was a reserve off the bench. It's a freshman. I think he's their second leading scorer on the year, but he's a freshman that they've that, that he's plays with a lot of confidence and freedom, um, and he's certainly somebody we talked about in the scouting report. And then obviously their their leading scorer. Uh, who's a terrific shooter and, and really makes them dangerous offensively, was out. So, you know, we, we find out when you guys find out, we walk out for, you know, assistant runs back and goes, Coach, there's two guys that are in street clothes. One of them's in a boot, one of them's in a cast. And for us, it's simple. We just, the first time we see the guys in the locker room, we cross them off the scouting report on the board. And we add a couple guys that we think may play that we didn't cover and give them, our guys a couple details on them. And, uh, and then we, we move on, right? It, if we had some kind of game plan based on one of those guys, that would be off. But we just kind of move on. I, I can't tell you how they approach it. In terms of, I think you asked about next week, uh, I, I, I'm going to be really forthcoming with injury stuff this year. 
I, I've made a commitment to my staff and my team. I'm not going to play any kind of games or stuff. I just think there's too many outside things in college basketball with injuries that I just want to keep information clear to everybody. So, you know, you, it's just the way the way it is now. There's a lot of things that scare you as a coach that you can't control. So we're always going to – we're not playing any injury games. So I'll tell you what I know. And what I know is Aziz worked out today. He got a sweat. It was the first time I saw him move. I wouldn't say 100%, but it's the first time I saw him get up and dunk the ball and move with a little bit of pop. He had not, has not done that yet since the Dayton game. I mean, I think it's been hard for him to get out of bed, that type of thing. Um, so I think he's trending in the right direction. I, it's a back. I can't tell you if he's going to be able to – I don't think he'll practice tomorrow, but I can't tell you what it'll look like in a week. You guys know I want him back as soon as I possibly can get him back without putting him in any kind of jeopardy. And then CJ's a hamstring. He's completely shut down, no activity right now. If we played five, six, seven days from now, I would say there's no way – but it's just how quickly does that hamstring heal? And then we got to get him back in like a return to play thing. We're not going to just get it healed and throw him out there. So that that's Mike Rayfeld, uh, Bob Mangine, you know, Dr. Donaldworth. It's our medical staff that's going to determine that. But CJ's not even he's, – he's doing zero. He's completely shut down right now. So I think we got a ways to go with him. 18. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd heard that. Now, I'd, I'd have been booing, too, if I could damn boo. I was probably booing in my own coaching way, you know. So, I, you should boo that. It was terrible. But, uh, um, no, I mean, I, I, I don't, I, again, I've probably come a long way. Like, I'm trying to get better and grow every every damn year. I, I love trying to get better, just like we asked the players to do. And I probably lost my mind and yelled and screamed. And I didn't do that tonight. I just – tried to point out the things that we had to do because I think these are really good kids that want to be good. I just think they're still learning what it takes to be good. And so it's not about yelling and screaming because it's not like they don't want to be good or they don't want to perform. It's about trying to teach them. And I'm not very damn patient, but I'm, I'm trying to do a good job of coaching in those moments. Evansville has been one of the best defensive rebounding teams in the country and 18 offensive rebounds. Maybe not as many second chance points as you like, but uh, – they have to be you know, satisfied with at least their effort on the, the offensive glass throughout the game. And I want more. I mean, we're, we're rebounding the ball well statistically, and I, every time somebody points that out to me, I go, damn, I think we can get better there. I think this could be a great rebounding team. Jamil Reynolds, and I, I thank the world of him, guys. I just, I'm having so much fun coaching him because the talent's incredible, and he wants to be good, and he comes to work every day. And I just I just think it's – it's coming. He's just got some habits. He's not even crashing the board like I know he's capable of. And it's, he's trying. But when he gets the habit of how to defeat a box out and go, I mean, oh, oh boy. So I I think we can we can, we can, can get even better there. Um, I really do. And I think there's some other big-time categories we could improve in as well. Thanks. CMOS, it hasn't been uh, probably a fun three weeks, a month for you since since the accident. How good did it feel to, to kind of get back out there tonight and really get back in the flow? Um, it felt very good. And, yeah, like you said, it's been frustrating. You know, really the whole season I've been dealing with little kind of tweaks and injuries that I never had, not only in my college career but in my life, I'd say. So it's it's really been frustrating. But, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to be to be back, to be able to practice right now and, and hopefully, you know, turn a corner right now. How close do you feel like to being back to 100%? Or Very is that close. not happening this year? Very close. Probably not this year, but I got you in three days. <laughs> John, down eight at the half. What was the message from Wes as far as defensively? It seemed like you guys were struggling to defend the paint. Yeah, he said, like, in the second half, Davis in the second half. Uh, I think, you know, we all kind of knew. Honestly, he didn't, talk that, he didn't talk that much about defense in the locker room, did he? Like, he said, I mean, it was mainly about offense, just getting the ball to both sides, like change sides of the floor. But I think we kind of knew as individuals and as a team, like we had to take on the challenge. Uh, I think they were kind of going at us one-on-one. -on -one. So, like, you know, we all men here. So, you know, you want to uh, 
just accept your challenge. You know what I'm saying? Guard your guy, guard your yard. I think it was more about that. He he touched on defense a little bit, but I think it was kind of like he already knew that, uh, you know, the kind of guys that we have in our locker room, high character guys. So I think he figured we would respond. And, um, you know, that's what happened. So I'm, I'm, glad, to, I'm glad we did it. John, you guys go on a big run in that second half. What's the key to finding that consistency and stacking those possessions on both sides of the ball? I think our defense is our superpower. Um, you know, whenever we pre whenever we play with activity and um, we're flying around, getting deflections, getting loose balls, that kind of gets our offense rolling because we get to get out and transition and run, get easy baskets. And then it was great to see C Moss like knock down a bunch of shots. That's what he does. Um, so it was good to see him, and then everybody just got going. I think, but I think it starts on the defensive end for us. And so you know, we kind of we kind of need to continue to try to work at it every day to make that our identity. Our identity. Simosh, you hit a, uh, tied a career high with five made threes tonight. How is the shooting stroke feeling uh, go, to go along with the shoulder, and just overall, how is that kind of coming along over the last week? Uh, shooting feels good. It it always has. So that's that's not a problem really. It was just about you know being healthy enough to practice and and get my reps in. So. Yeah, I feel I feel good in terms in terms of my shot. Um, yeah, I, w I, w I wish I kind of I wish I affected the game in more in more ways because you know five threes. Is n I'm not always gonna shoot like that. You know, I might have some bad shooting days, so I got to be able to to do do other stuff out there for my team too. John, 18 points, six of eight shooting. What was working for you on the offensive end tonight? It seemed like you were being a little bit more aggressive on that side of the ball, but we know what you get on the defensive end. How key was it for you to get going on the offensive side here tonight? Uh, yeah, it was just, I think the ball just found me in, like, opportune places. Uh, my teammates found me. And, you know, just playing with confidence. I think that was one thing that we, yeah, Coach West said that in the locker room. Like, we need to just step up and make shots, uh, play with confidence. You know, we, this is a program, like, we put the work in every single day. Guys are working. Guys are in and out of the gym, getting better. So, um, you know, kind of for me and for everyone, just about playing with confidence, being aggressive, and, um, you know, just stepping up to the plate. John, you've been here long enough to know the passion of a Bearcat fan, hmm. and you guys heard some of that late in the first half. When Wes calls the timeout, they go on a 10 nothing <laughs> run. You heard the boos. Yeah. You heard the boos coming off the court at halftime. What's your reaction when you hear that? Uh, my reaction, man, they care a lot here. They care a lot here. I'm, I'm thankful to be um, – a part of a program where fans care that much, you know. I mean, no one likes to be booed, but the fact that they even care tells us that we need to step our, our game up, you know, then we need to do something different. So um, I, don't, I don't take things like that to heart. I just show them that they care. Um, but, you know, I just I just looked at it like I, I heard it. That was like the – that was yeah, I think that might have be the first time that happened to us this year. But I heard it. Um, and it's just like, you know, for me it's just all about the response. You know how we're gonna respond to it. You know, obviously they they love us. They want to see us play good, a good brand of basketball, and we weren't doing that in the first half. So, um, you know, I'm glad we responded. And uh, you know, it's not always ideal, but you know, it's good another care. Seamus, you made the three. I think you went to the timeout at 54:46, but that was the one I saw you throw your hands up in the air. Can you describe that feel? I, maybe you do that on all of them. That's the only one I saw. But uh, I mean, did you feel like tonight? You know, people were getting the CMOS that 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 everyone figured they'd get. Uh, the three-point shooting part, yeah, I guess <laughs> I didn't do much else except for uh, except for the three-point shooting. But yeah, I mean, throwing my hands up. That, I think that was my uh, fourth one where we like kind of went on a on a huge run in the in the fast break. And uh, you know, then when when everything's going well, we're we're playing great defense. The crowd is loud. Um, you know, it's just kind of natural. I don't even think about it. So yeah. Yeah, would well, you had six rebounds and three assists? Though. That's tough. That's a good little Thanks, man. Thanks, yeah. John. All right. Thank you, John. They were one of the best defensive rebounding teams in the country coming in. Uh, they had 24 defensive rebounds. You guys had 18 offensive rebounds. How much of a focus was that and satisfied with the way you were able to kind of attack a strength of theirs? Uh, yeah. I mean, we always – Coach West always preaches to, to offensive rebound. We got a lot of big wings, big guards that can go do that. You know, Dan Skillings, he's like – I don't know how he does it. He has like a crazy talent to just go get the ball. He got a nose for the ball, long arms, athletic. Um, me, CMOS, we got big guys down low. Like we have a bunch of, of rebounding weapons. So that's kind of ours, I think. Um, yeah, but we just want to we just wanted to focus on us. We know that pretty much every game teams are gonna crash hard. You know, it's, it's college basketball, but we just want to focus on what we do really. Try to do that to the best of our abilities. 
when you guys kind of know or find out right before the game that they're not going to have their two best offensive players, two top scorers, does that kind of throw a wrench in what you guys were trying to do in the first half and then you can adjust better in the second half? Or was that just execution and, and effort on your guys' end that you cleaned up in the second half? Um, I don't think it changed anything for us in the first half. The The first half was mainly just us coming out like like a days ago and not playing like we were supposed to. Um, and uh, in terms of their two best players being out, um, it, yeah, like I said, it, it doesn't really change much. We, we still can't came into the game with the same mentality and, uh, you know, just the just the fact that the matchups are different and, and the scout is different. But I'd say the main thing for us was just we, we had to take it personal after the first half and they really, really kicked our butts. Yeah, I think um, in practice we started to lock back in on our defensive drills, um, you know, finishing the D, you know, guarding our yard. Um, I think we still could have did that a little better tonight. But I think he kind of makes it like a, a personal battle. Like, you know, it's another man in front of you. It's a challenge. You got to take on that challenge. Um, and just, you know, going into league play, we know we can't, we can't have nights like that where we're just found all over the place. We'll get blown out, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the Big 12. Guys are going to make free throws. We can't put guys on the line like that. So I think it's kind of just the emphasis in practice and then the common understanding that, you know, we got to be better going forward. One more question. Uh, Seamus, after I think it might have been your fifth three, you were ch you're going back and forth with the guy that kind of hit you in the, in the face. What what was that, like uh, just accepting the challenge? or? Oh, I have no, no idea. I don't remember, really. Like I said, you know, when when the energy's flowing and and I make a shot, you know, it's good. everything kind of comes natural. I'm not even thinking about what I'm doing. And uh, I guess yeah, getting hit in the face three seconds before that also kind of helped. But uh, yeah, I, I can't tell you really what's going through my head at that point. Get back on defense, is probably, <laughs> you know, the main thing. But Thanks, fellas. appreciate y'all. Thank, Thank you. you.